biology students. My name is Ms. Wilson and I am a teacher at Roosevelt High School here in Seattle Public Schools. I'm here to introduce you to the population ecology unit that we have redesigned for distance learning. A whole bunch of teachers here in Seattle Public Schools have worked really hard and worked together to prepare this for you. And we wanted to make these videos just so that you had an option to hear from teachers and just to maybe go through the PowerPoints with a little bit of guidance, because we know that learning from home is a new challenge that we're all kind of delving into together. So thank you for your patience with us. We're going to try and be patient with you too. Um, I want to tell you, I'm super excited to introduce you to this unit. I have personally loved orca whales for like my entire life. And so this is going to be just really fun to have you guys engaging and understanding orca whales a little bit more. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move my video to the side of the screen. So this way you can still see me here, but I really want you to be able to focus on this PowerPoint slide that you see here. So to get us going, at the very beginning of every single PowerPoint lesson in this unit, you're going to see this how to use this PowerPoint slide. So we will not go over it in as much detail in the subsequent lessons, but for this first time, I want to go over it with you just so you understand what we're kind of looking for here, what are the expectations, and um, just what should you keep in mind. So first and foremost, work at your own pace. This is by far the most important lesson to take away from this. I recognize, and we all recognize, all of your teachers, that this is a stressful time, um, that this is unusual, this is unprecedented, meaning that it's just something we weren't prepared for, and we're all just going to have to be a little bit flexible. So please work at your own pace. Your health and your family come first. If possible, you might find it helpful to go through these activities at the same time as a peer. Normally in class, you'd have a lot of opportunities to like talk to your peers and talk through ideas. That's going to be a lot harder from home, but thankfully technology is a great way to do that. So if possible, communicate through text, email, or phone call with that friend or partner and go ahead and share some questions and ideas with each other. It's going to help you understand this more. Number three, you might find it helpful to have a piece of scrap paper. I personally prefer to have a notebook just to put all my ideas in. This could be a science notebook if you had one um, before the school closure or just any piece of paper you have at your house, no problem. You're also gonna want a pencil or a pen to record your ideas. Number four, read through the slides one at a time. This is part of going at your own pace. You might need to slow down and take more time on a slide that you don't understand as quickly. Um, take that time to explore the images and links that we've provided too. Some of the PowerPoints you're going to see, we have a whole bunch of links, and you might just want to really dive into exploring those. There might be ones that you're like, I'm not as interested in that, so you might spend more or less time. Next up, if you come across something you don't understand, what I want you to do is make note of which slide you're on, go through that whole PowerPoint, and come back to it. See if it makes sense to you after you've gone through everything. If you're still feeling confused, I want you to email your teacher with a question. Your teachers are available um, by, by email, through office hours, however your teacher has arranged, but you can reach out to your teacher. We're still here. You could also ask someone in your household or reach out to a peer through text, email, or a call. Again, it's good to engage with others. Next up, when you finish, I want you to consider sharing what you've learned with someone in your household or with a friend through text, email, or a phone call. Explain your, explaining your thinking is really going to help you make sense of the information, and you actually learn a lot more when you teach others. So this is an opportunity to share what you are doing. All right, let's get into the lesson itself. So population ecology initial ideas. Lesson one, why has the orca population declined in Puget Sound? How can we protect orca populations in the future? This is an initial ideas lesson. This is something you might have done in your class. Initial ideas lessons are the start of the unit, and it's a point where you're not expected to know anything yet. This is a point where we're just gathering information, figuring out what you already know. Goals. You're going to see a goal slide in every single PowerPoint that we do in these units. This is going to tell you exactly what you should know or be able to do after you go through this PowerPoint lesson. So for this particular lesson, I want you to be able to identify several things that you notice from a video, graphs, and charts, and several questions that you have about orca whales. Number two, 
I want you to be able to support your claims with evidence. And number three, identify reasons why people are concerned about orca populations in Puget Sound. So we'll come back to these and make sure that you can do them at the end of the lesson. Okay, these are the two guiding questions for our entire unit. You might have heard this as driving question or driving question board. So these are the two questions that by the end of this unit, we want you to be able to answer. So number one, why has the orca population declined in Puget Sound? And number two, how can we protect orca populations in the future? At the end of this lesson, I'm gonna direct you to make a learning tracking tool entry using these two questions um, as the guiding thing for the entire unit. Again, this is an expressing ideas moment, so it's not expected that you already know how to answer these questions. All right, so in order to get into this, you're gonna need the phenomenon. The phenomenon is that puzzling thing that you find out about at the very beginning of a unit, and it helps us to figure out what you already know about a topic. So in this case, we're gonna to try to figure out what's happening to the orca populations in Puget Sound. Why are we presenting this to you? Why do we want you to know about it? So I'm gonna be showing you an orca video. Um, it's actually a news video about an event that happened recently. And I want you to make a T-chart that looks like this. So if you haven't already, I want you to grab that scrap paper or a notebook, and I want you to set it up um, to show a T-chart like this. So you can just draw a line down the middle and make a section for what you notice. So that's gonna be just observations or things that you hear during the video and what you wonder. This is questions that you have. I would like you to have at least four things that you write down in each section. So if you haven't already done this, please pause the video, grab that paper, and set it up with a T-chart. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get that video set up for you. So bear with me for a moment. Okay, here's our video. See a killer. It's heartbreaking to see a killer whale carrying her calf who died shortly after birth. For 17 days, the orca, known as J-35, wouldn't let go of her baby. Flood of sadness just to see that she was carrying the calf still. Taylor Shedd was part of a team trying to keep the mammal and her pod of southern resident whales safe from boats. Just monitoring her health, monitoring her behavior, seeing how she was reacting, how she was interacting with the rest of the pod. This weekend, the Center for Whale Watching reported J-35 finally stopped carrying the calf, which was the first born into this endangered pod in three years. Very normal for mothers to carry um, a calf that has recently passed away. But the Vancouver Aquarium's head veterinarian says doing that for more than two weeks is beyond what experts have seen in the past. Why is not clear. We can't also judge an animal for what it's doing based on what we think it should be doing as humans. So sometimes we, we do some injustice to animals by treating them as humans. The number of killer whales off the U.S. and Canada's coast are dwindling. There are only 75 down from 100 in the 90s. That's why successful breeding is key. A lot of those are due to everybody. You know, everyone can play a role in mitigating those factors. It's, it's up to us to try and make our environment better for this population of whales. J-35 was last observed to be happy and healthy in her pod. Experts hope that continues so she has a chance at being a mother. All right, now that you've watched that video, it's time to make sure you've finalized your notes. So on your note sheet, please make sure you've written down at least four things that you notice and at least four things that you wonder or questions that you have. So go ahead and pause the video if you need some more time to make those notes. All right. Next up, we want to think about what did we learn about orca populations? So that video had a lot of information in it, and it probably made you wonder what's going on with the orcas. So your teacher may have set up a Schoology discussion board. So on their Schoology page, it will be a space for you to discuss with other classmates your ideas for this lesson. Um, they will have a space for you to post and share your learnings and ideas. So in that space, I want you to share as many learnings as you can 
so as many things that you noticed, and as many questions as you can, so those things that you wondered. You can also post ideas about how you think we can protect orca populations in the future. All right, for the next five slides, we're going to examine some data. And that data is going to help us further understand the orca whales in Puget Sound. Now, for each of those five data sets, I want you to answer these four questions. That means you're going to answer these four questions five times, so a total of 20 answers. So I want you to, again, have that piece of scrap paper and either continuing your T-chart or you can do it separately as separate notes. I want you to make sure you are answering these questions. So here are the four questions to answer. First and foremost, how is the data being presented? Is it an image? Is it a graph? If it's a graph, what variables are being measured on each axis? Is it an infographic? Um, if it is, how does that numerical and graphical representation help you make conclusions? Number two, I want you to summarize the data in your own words. This is kind of like that part I was talking about with sharing your learning with other people. I want you to pretend that you're on a phone call with a friend trying to describe that graph or infographic to them and they can't see it. You have to use your words to describe it to them. Number three, what questions do you have about the data? This is anything that you want to know more about. And number four, what other information would help you to answer the two unit driving questions? Why has the orca population declined in Puget Sound? And how can we protect orca populations in the future? Okay, time for data set number one. So please make sure that you are ready to make some notes, that you have your note sheet ready. All right. Data set number one is showing us orca aerial photos, just meaning orca photos taken from above. So we see orca whales at three different time periods. And first and foremost, I want to point out that this is not the same whale. So it's always important to read the captions. And this caption shows us that these are images of three adult females from J-Pod. We're going to talk more about orca pods in a minute. And we're seeing J41 on the left, J16 in the center, and J17 on the right. So those are just numbers used to represent the different orca whales. J41 is in what they're calling robust condition. Robust condition just means that she looks really healthy. They also say that her midbody, this section here, indicates that she's actually pregnant, that she's carrying a calf or a baby whale at this time. Here, J16 and J17 are in what they're calling notably lean condition. That means that they're too thin. So this gives us a sense of what orcas look like and what might be indicators of health. So let's pause for a moment. I want you to make sure that you're answering those four questions. So question number one was how is the data being presented? This is photos. Number two, Summarize the data in your own words. So again, pretend you're making that phone call to a friend and they cannot see these images. Describe them to them. Describe these images to your friend in your own words. And don't try to use the words that are down here in the caption. These are kind of confusing. Use your own words that would make sense to you, that would make sense to your friend. Number three, what questions do you have about the data? Number four, what other information would help you answer the unit questions? Why has the orca population declined in Puget Sound? And how can we protect orcas in the future? Please pause the video and take a few minutes to answer those questions if you haven't already done so. Okay, here's data set number two. This is showing the southern resident orca pod size. So orcas live in family groups called pods. So that's what a pod is referring to as a family of orcas. This is specifically for the southern residents, meaning that the orca whales in this um, image are representing the orcas that live in Puget Sound. Those are the southern residents. You can see the key here that shows males in black, females in gray, and calves in yellow. You see three different pods, L, J, and K, with L being the largest pod, with a total of 36 whales. 
J having 30 whales, and K has 19 whales. So this gives you a sense of the mix of males, females, and calves in these three different pods. So let's answer those questions. Number one, how is the data being presented? I would say that this is an infographic. Try to think about how is this infographic presenting information? Number two, summarize the data in your own words. So here, again, I want you to pretend you're making that phone call to a friend and tell them what this shows if they couldn't see it. Number three, what questions do you have about the data? What does this make you wonder? You might wonder, why doesn't K-Pod have any calves? There are so many things you could wonder. Number four, what other information would help you answer the unit questions? Why has the orca population declined in Puget Sound? And how can we protect orcas in the future? What else would you want to know to be able to answer those questions? Please pause the video, take a few minutes to make your notes if you have not already. Okay, here's data set number three. This data set is showing the southern resident orca population since 1974, so it's indicating the size of the population. This is a graph, although I have to say they have not done a good job of labeling their axes, so make sure that you call out what the axes are as you make notes. So down here on the x-axis, this to me looks like year, showing years from 1974 to 2015. And then here on the y-axis, this is the population size of orcas in number of orcas. So 20, 40, 60, 80 orcas is what this is indicating. Then we have a key here showing what the different colored lines represent. So we have our three different pods, L, J, and K, that you might recall from the previous slide. And then this is the total population of southern resident orcas. They've given us some really helpful notes on this graph. So we can see it's noting that before 1974, the historical estimated number of orca whales in Puget Sound were about 200, or 200 or more. The first census, so that just means the first counting of the number of whales, was conducted in 1974, and they counted 70 whales. Notice that in terms of the total population, it went up, there's a bit of a dip, and then it continued to go up. We don't really know why, if the orcas were thriving, maybe they were getting better at counting orcas since that was a new practice. We don't really know why that happened, so you can make some hypotheses about that. And then here we can get a reference to how big of a dip this is. This shows a 20% decline of orca whales in five years. Here we see a bit of an increase, and at this point, orca whales are listed as endangered in the year 2005. We're going to talk more about the Endangered Species Act in just a few minutes. Uh, over here, we can see that J50 was born December 2014, and at that time, J50 was the first calf to survive um, since 2012. Here, we can see that eight new calves were born in 2015, but at this point, they weren't sure how those calves would do and they were projecting where, where are the whales going and they weren't sure. So let's go ahead and pause and answer those questions. Number one, how is the data being presented? This is a graph. When you say that, you should identify what are the two axes, the x-axis in years, the y-axis in number of orcas. Number two, summarize the data in your own words. This is kind of like a graph interpretation or think of it as explaining this to a friend. Number three, what questions do you have about the data? What does this make you wonder? Number four, what other information would help you answer the unit questions? Why has the orca population declined in Puget Sound? And how can we protect orcas in the future? Please pause the video and make notes on those questions if you haven't done so yet. All right, almost there, data set four. Data set four is really a follow-up on data set three. It's again showing the southern resident population size. We have J, K, and L pods, as well as the total population size. But this time, the data has extended all the way up to 2019. So this shows us the continued trends. So we can see they've also added in some numbers for all of the years, so you can track that information. 
And we can see from 2015 to 2019, there was a drop in the overall population size. And we can follow the trends for some of the different pods. So again, let's answer those questions. Number one, how is the data being presented? It's a graph. Please make notes on the axes. Number two, summarize the data in your own words. Write that graph interpretation or explain it to a friend. Number three, what questions do you have about this data? You might wonder, what's causing these dips? How do we explain some of these? Why do we see this trend for the L pod versus other pods? Number four, what other information would help you to answer the unit questions? Why has the orca population declined in Puget Sound? And how can we protect orcas in the future? Data set five, habitat for southern resident orca whales. This is a really different data set and it's a little bit complicated. So here we have a map showing the Puget Sound region. Here you can see Washington State, and this is just zooming in on the Puget Sound region. Notice that there's a legend for this map that notes the U.S. Canadian border. It also shows summer core area, Puget Sound area, and Strait of Juan de Fuca area. So those are noted here, but we don't really know what that means, that these are critical habitats. So we need this text over here. Critical habitat is defined as the specific areas within the geographical area occupied by the species at the time it is listed in accordance with the Endangered Species Act. So the specific area where orcas live at the time that they were listed on the Endangered Species Act. So in 2005, where did orca whales live? Okay, it says in which are found those physical or biological features essential to the conservation of the species and which may require special management considerations or protection. So that means within their habitat, it contains physical features like the Puget Sound or biological features. So that can be the prey, the things that the orcas eat or other organisms that they interact with that are going to be important for the management of the orca whales. It also includes specific areas outside the geographical area occupied by the species, so areas other than where the orcas directly live, that are essential for the conservation of the species. Okay, so that's going to be other areas that influence the survival of orca whales. Let's look at those different areas. So area one, core summer, this is where the orcas live during the summer season. It's right around the San Juan Islands, if you're familiar with the San Juans. Area two, the Puget Sound. So this is where Seattle is located. And area three, the Strait of Juan de Fuca. So resident orca whales, southern resident orcas, are found in all three of these areas, and they all play a role in survival of orca whales. Let's go ahead and answer those questions. Number one. How is the data being produced? So, or how is the data being presented? So let's go ahead and note this is a map and it's a map of critical area. You could describe the zoom in if you like. Number two, summarize the data in your own words. So again, don't try to write these words here. This is super confusing. Go ahead and explain it in a way that makes sense to you. What does this map show? Number three, what questions do you have about the data? What does this make you wonder? What else do you want to know? Number four, what other information would help you answer the unit questions? Why has the orca population declined in Puget Sound? And how can we protect orcas in the future? Please pause the video and make notes on those questions if you haven't already. Great job, you made it through the five data sets. Now it's time to kind of wrap up our ideas. So the way I want you to do that is to think about all of that data that you just saw. And I want you to generate two statements, two claims about what you noticed in examining those five data sets. So you should make a claim or a statement about what is happening to orca whales. So again, if you were gonna go explain this to a friend or a family member, and you were gonna summarize this entire lesson in two statements, what would those statements be? what would you say is happening to orca whales? After you write those two statements, I want you to support your statement. So if you say that something's happening to orca whales, 
back it up with evidence. Go back to those data slides and go ahead and give reasons why you know that that claim is something that you should say. So back it up and give evidence for that claim. Go ahead and pause the video and write those things out. Congratulations, you have made it to the very last slide. Check your understanding. I know you did a lot of work. You probably have a lot of notes. Um, now what I want you to do is see if you understand these things. Could you tell me why are people concerned about Southern resident orcas? Think about those claims that you just wrote. Would that be a good way to summarize? Number two, are you concerned about the Southern resident orcas? Why or why not? This is a personal question. So just think, is this something that is of concern to you? Number three, what piece of data did you find interesting? And what piece of data did you find confusing? Was there a data element that was just really um, compelling for you? Was it really convincing that you could um, just really think that that's important for the orca whales? And was there a piece that you're still kind of confused about? That might be something to talk to a peer about or to send an email to your teacher. Uh, you can either make notes on these questions or just think through your answers to make sure to make sure that you're understanding them. All right, what's next? Well, after you finish this video and have gone through anything else you wanna go through in the PowerPoint, I want you to make an entry in your learning tracking tool. This is something that you're gonna do after every single lesson in this unit. You're gonna title your first entry, one, introduction to Southern resident orcas. Let me show you what this looks like. So this is your learning tracking tool for population ecology. You will be able to download this as a Word file if you'd like to type straight into it, or you can download it as a PDF if that is easier for you. If it's not possible for you to print this out or to work on it electronically, no problem. Feel free to take that notebook or scrap paper and just write out the answers to the items on the learning tracking tool. That is just fine. The learning tracking tool is taking us back to those driving questions. Remember, we want to be able to answer these by the end of the unit. So in each lesson, so again, you're going to write in for this one, number one, initial ideas, and you're going to say, what did we do? What did we figure out? So don't spend a lot of time saying, oh, I watched this video with Ms. Wilson. That's not important. What's important is what you figured out. So write about and summarize those key things that you figured out about the orca whales. Then I want you to say, how can our learning be used to explain the phenomenon? So how does what you figured out help you answer these two questions? Next, self-assess. So this is to say, where are you in your preparation to explain these two questions? By the end of this, you should be able to write a complete gapless explanation. So you should be able to um, explain these two questions to your teacher, to a friend, to anyone. If you feel like you could do that right now, you would say, I'm ready, but probably you're not ready. This is the first lesson. So you can just say, just starting to get it, need more information, whatever feels right to you. What questions do you have? You wrote down a whole bunch of questions in your notes today, but there might be one that's really just sticking out in your mind or that you feel like that's the thing that I need to know next. Write that question or a couple of questions here. And again, you're gonna come back to this for subsequent lessons, and you're gonna put it all together to be able to explain these driving questions for the unit. All right, that's it. You've made it through this first lesson. Again, please consider explaining it to a friend or a family member and reach out to that teacher of yours with any questions that you have. Feel free to email them or attend office hours. Thanks a lot. I hope you'll enjoy this unit. See you later. Bye.